Hey fellow home theater nerds, I thought I'd show you a little tour of the theater room here and I'll start with the rack in the utility room. Uh, in the rack, it's a strong FS series rack. In it we've got network switch, we've got a control floor hub for the remote, we've got the Roku, we've got the uh, 4K Ultra HD displayer, the Marantz SR8015, this thing is quite a beast. Uh, an older Xbox, and then down here we've got um, a Watt box as well as a Surge X UPS protector. This stuff's pretty cool. It, I mean, obviously it protects the equipment from getting damaged in case of little surges and stuff like that, but even more so, it's got uh, this oversee feature which allows um, the guy who installed all this equipment for me to kind of shut things down, turn things on and off, reset things if firmware updates come out. Um, etc. And then up here at the top, I don't think I mentioned it, got the PS5 uh, here. And so the rack itself is pretty nice and it's also got a couple built-in fans at the top to help dispense uh, or displace I guess some of the heat coming out and then a lot of a lot of cabling which was the subject of a different post that generated a lot of controversy, we'll get into that, that, that runs into the uh, into the back of the rack here. And then outside the utility room, that's where I keep all my discs for movies. Um, got them arranged alphabetically. It's a smattering of DVDs, Blu-rays, as well as 4K discs. Got some good ones in here. Uh, American Psycho Steelbook, which is pretty neat. But also some really shitty older movies in here as well in the collection. For instance, Basketball, which is fucking terrible. Okay, and then the kids' bounce house, because in Chicago wintertime, you got to have stuff for the kids to do to keep them burning energy. Popcorn maker, um, neat little addition to the theater. For anybody that's got a popcorn machine, highly recommend the Great Northern little all-in-one tri-packs. you got your goody, your buttery, fatty goodness there on the right. Some seasoning there in the middle, and then the kernels themselves. And then also... Got some nice uh, seasoning for this stuff as well. So kind of fun. Makes the whole basement smell like a, a legit theater, which is nice. In the future, plan to put some light-up frames on this wall. Uh, some backlit frames. So had it pre-wired when we were doing this room to make it easy to install those in the future. Got them lined up to a switch over here. And then also have a pre-wired recessed outlet for hopefully a marquee at some point in the future. And in the theater room itself... We just put up um, some of these acoustic panels. Got these for free from a buddy that no longer needed them. They were built by uh, GIK, which I, I believe is based out of Atlanta. Um, but I waited like six months to put these up and I wish I hadn't because having these all up makes the whole room uh, just sound a lot tighter. You can you can more accurately place where a lot of the, the, the sound is coming from, which is pretty nice. So, um, anyway, in the room have two of these beasts. These are the SVS PB 3000s. Um, they pressurize the room very nicely. The room itself is about 20 by 16 by 8. We've got the 125 inch um, 1.3 gain acoustically transparent uh, 2.40 to 1 screen, which I love that aspect ratio because the, the main use case for this room is, is movies. Right now, it's just on the menu screen for the Blu-ray player. Uh, there's the other SVS sub. Got some bass traps. Eventually, I uh, want to get some heavier curtains. This is kind of some flimsy shit right now. But would love some heavier curtains to further kind of deaden any reflections from the speakers. Also, because they were free, I'm not going to complain too much about the color. But the color doesn't really do it for me. They're too, it's too bright of a color. Um, so I ordered some samples to see about getting the... Uh, the panels rewrapped to better blend in with the, the forest green on the walls. Got the LED lighting on the steps, which is a kind of a fun little touch. Uh, little mini fridge in the back with a bunch of beverages. Um, and then we've got 10 seats from htmarket.com. Highly recommend checking out the furniture available at HT Market. So um, each of these seats, I'll show you the one sitting next to me. Each of these seats kind of reclines. Um, individually. It doesn't need a ton of room to recline, which is nice. Um, and they also light up. So actually I hate the light up feature, 
because people accidentally turn them on and it just bleeds light onto the screen, which uh, is a pain in the ass. Up here, we've got the JVC NX7 projector, which throws off an incredible image. Um, the HDR is phenomenal. The color accuracy is really good. Um, was originally going to go with the NX5, but uh, there was some supply issues with the NX5 and was able to get a good deal on the NX7, so went with that and, and love it. Um, got the mount up there, and then back there is where all the wires kind of come into this room from the utility room. And let's see. So throughout the room, there's... 13 speakers in total, including the sub. It's a 7.2.4 setup, and all the speakers are Sonance. Uh, it's their R1 series speakers, which I've been really pleased with so far. Hopefully I can get this magnetic panel back on here. Um, and eventually I'd love to paint these as well to match the rest of the walls. A little candy dispenser, some controllers for the PS5, and of course we've got Again, the Sonance uh, R1s, these are the, the ceiling, SU, ceiling surrounds, R1 CSURs for those interested, have four of those. So it's a 7.2.4, 7.2.4 setup. Um, and then everything's kind of controlled here, which is nice from the control four aspect on the, on the wall or the remote, which I'll show you in a second. So you've got like a movie scene setting, which dims the lights. You've got the credits setting, which makes things a little bit brighter at the end of the movie, and then full bright and, and off. The remote itself, <clears throat> I really love. I highly recommend getting a universal setup like this. I know Logitech makes some nice equipment, or they used to make some nice equipment as well. Um, so if I hit, like, watch Roku, it automatically change changes the lighting settings, flips the input, and I can control the entire Roku device from this remote, which is nice. Um, and then if I hit watch movie or watch blu-ray i should say so there's the roku screen it takes a little bit for it to transition over watch blu-ray again changes the lighting settings in the room and goes back to the blu-ray screen in this case um, i believe the last movie in here was jungle cruise i was watching with my wife her and i don't have the same taste in movies so sometimes you go to appease the uh the lady here so uh, anyway, uh, I guess the last thing is there's a little image of the, of the menu screen from Jungle Cruise. So we can just play that, why not? Um, and then yeah, from the remote can also control basically everything from this remote. So I can turn the sconces all the way off, turn the steps all the way off, and I can actually switch the aspect ratio from this remote. So let's do 2.4 to 1, so it fills the whole screen. Disney fireworks going off. So anyway, just wanted to show uh, a little tour of my home theater. It's something I dreamed about as a kid. Very uh, fortunate I realized to be able to have done something like this in my house. And um, I got a lot of inspiration from others on this subreddit. So wanted to show sort of what that inspiration led to. Anyway, thanks for watching.